everyone my name is Rachel welcome back to my channel I am so 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 excited to bring you guys this reading vlog and that is going to be for A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. this is a book and a series that has been on my TBR for well over a year these books have just been sitting on my shelves for a really long time and I definitely wanted to make this series a priority for 2020 so I am just so happy to document my reading experience with you guys. Also FYI, especially for you guys that have not been following me for a while, I did an entire reading vlog series for the Throne of Glass series, which is also by Sarah J Mass. I will link that playlist up in the cards above. And I did a separate vlog for each book of that series. So I'm going to do the same thing with this trilogy. I am not going to bother reading the novella, which is A Court of Frost and Starlight, because I've heard that it's very unnecessary and that it's just not a good book. So I'm not going to put myself through that. So A Court of Thorns and Roses, or as it is commonly known as Akatar. This is about this 19 year old girl named Feyre. She lives in a pretty poor village. Her family is essentially starving. It's like the dead of winter right now and so she has to hunt for their food. And while she's hunting in the forest she ends up killing this wolf but then she learns that this wolf was Fey, and so this man named Tamlin shows up to their cottage and tells her that the punishment for taking Fey's life is a life for a life and that can either be served as Tamlin just killing Feyre or Feyre can come back with him to the land of the Fey and live out the rest of her life and so that's what she decides to do. I am on page 75 exactly that's chapter 8 and at this part of the story she is now at like the high court of the Fae. I guess that's what it's referred to. She is now just living in this very opulent mansion with Tamlin. I assumed that she would end up getting captured and brought to the Fae like the first chapter, but we get a few chapters of what her life is really like and I find that really interesting. We really get to see how desperate her and her whole family and really her whole village is and the way that she tries to survive and tries to take care of her family. And even though Feyre is the youngest of her three sisters, uh, on her mother's deathbed she made Feyre promise that she would always take care of her family and so that's what she's been doing this whole time. I also find it interesting that in exchange for Feyre going to Prithian with Tamlin, Tamlin has made sure that her family is well taken care of, which I think is very very generous considering the fact that she killed one of their own. At the same time she didn't mean to so yeah it's a whole thing. I'm actually looking at a map of the world that this takes place in and I think that this is so interesting because we get to see like the southern tip of this island, like there's the mortal lands, the south part of this land is mortal, and then this whole upper part of like this island is like different courts and stuff like that. Like I just think that's really cool and creative. Uh, also keep in mind I have not read a lot of like fairy based fantasy so maybe this isn't that unique but to me it's really unique and interesting. Feyre has noticed that all of the people living in this opulent mansion they all wear masks all the time. So Tamlin explains to her, he says, there's a sickness in these lands across Prithian. There has been for almost 50 years now. It is why this house and these lands are so empty. Most have left. The blight spread slowly but it has made magic act strangely. My own powers are diminished due to it. These masks are the result of a surge of it that occurred during a masquerade 49 years ago. Even now we can't remember move them. So it seems to be this kind of bad magic that is spreading slowly throughout all of their lands and according to Tamlin it will eventually affect the mortal lands but it doesn't seem to be an immediate danger right now. I'm enjoying this so far I will say it's not the most fast paced and it's not the most exciting book that I've ever read but I kind of went into this knowing that just because a lot of people have said that this first book is kind of boring compared to Akamath which is the second book. I'm very interested to see what further development we get with this bad magic that is taking over the land. And I'm also just more interested to see more character development. So with that being said, I think I'm just gonna update you guys at some point tomorrow. All right, so I am on page 208 right now. That is chapter 23 of Akatar. And I actually don't have a ton of thoughts, even though I'm more than halfway through the book at this point. So a couple things that I want to mention. The first is that I actually really like that Sarah J Mass has made Feyre's character uh, not 
able to really read that well. I think she can kind of read. Feyre does talk about how basically her mother kind of gave up on their education when they were young. Um, so it's definitely, definitely a struggle for her. And I kind of want that to be an opportunity for either Tamlin or since I know that's not who she ends up with, maybe Resand to teach her how to read. I think that would be like the cutest and most wholesome thing ever. Then speaking of Tamlin, obviously a romance is developing between the two of them but I knew going into this that that's not who she ends up with and I don't even think that's that big of a spoiler that she ends up with Resand. We've actually met him. There was one scene um, when it was like fire night or whatever it's called and Resand actually saved her from a couple of really bad fairies. So yeah definitely cannot wait to get much more of his character in the next books in the series but for now, there's like this romance between Tamlin and Feyre and part of me wants it to happen because I actually really like Tamlin. Uh, but part of me is like, I know that's not who she ends up with, so that's kind of a yikes. I've also heard that Tamlin's character gets worse throughout the series, like uh, maybe his true colors come out, maybe he's kind of an abusive person to the people that he loves, I don't really know. Also, Feyre is an idiot. Like she has gotten herself into trouble so many times because she just goes out into the forest and just doesn't even like consider how dangerous these fairy creatures are and like of course they're going to try to devour her because she's a human in a fairy world and I don't know she's just stupid. All the reckless things she does is like so opposite of me and my personality. Like if I were her I would just stay holed up in that house. Like girl I do not have a death wish. I'm very, very curious to see how this all plays out. Also, I will say, like I said, I'm a little more than halfway through the book and only like maybe two major events have happened this whole time. I definitely see where people are coming from when they say that this is kind of a boring book. If I'm being honest, I'm really glad that I have access to the audiobook via Scribd. Um, so I've just been listening to the audiobook and reading the physical book at the same time uh, because it's definitely making the book go by faster. I think if I was just reading this physically, I might be really, really bored. There's really just not a lot happening right now. She's just in the house with Tamlin and Lucian and like conversations happen. Um, but other than that, like I said, there's only been two major events. So I think that's going to be it for this update though. I'll probably just wait and update you guys when I finish the book because I do plan on finishing it by tonight. Uh, so yeah, I will talk to you guys later. So I finished A Court of Thorns and Roses last night and I do have quite a few thoughts. I think I'll just discuss some things first and then I'll give you guys like my overall review and wrap up and all of those things. Um, so I want to talk about Resand for a little bit. So I know that he becomes a much more major character in the second and third book and his character is very interesting to me because it's very different than what I expected. I discussed this also earlier in the vlog that there was one scene with him uh, and then later on in the book he shows up again and he is not so nice of a person. He's kind of a villain-ish. I don't know. I don't know. He's just very cruel to Feyre and I think at the end we learn like why he was acting the way that he was but he's not so great of a person and that's definitely not what I was expecting going into this. I do find him to be a very interesting and complex character because we don't really know his motivations. We don't really know who he is. Something I'm also kind of conflicted about with this book is Feyre's like 
desperate love for Tamlin that shows up like in the last hundred pages or so like all of a sudden she is just so desperate to be with Tamlin and I just kind of feel like that comes out of nowhere and I don't know leading up to this point in the book I wasn't really seeing how she could fall in love with him so deeply but at the same time I feel like because she was becoming so desperate with the situation that was going on at the end I think that made her believe that she loved him more than she actually does. So the main villain of this book presents a riddle to Feyre to solve towards the end and the real gag is that I solved it right away which never ever happens in books. Like I'm literally the worst at solving like puzzles, riddles, anything like that and the fact that I guessed it right away is just absolutely hilarious and also the fact that it took Feyre like the entire last part of the book to guess it is also pretty hilarious to me if I'm being honest. So for my overall review I think that there are a lot of lackluster things going on in this book if I'm being quite honest. There's not a ton of things that happen until the last maybe 100 to 150 pages or so. The first half definitely drags quite a bit. There's not much happening like I already discussed earlier in the vlog. I will say towards the end there were some very interesting plot twists that I wasn't expecting and I do like the characters. So despite the book dragging and it being kind of lackluster most of the time I still oddly enjoyed it. Also this book is like 460 16 pages and it definitely felt longer than that because of how much it dragged and I'm so so glad that I had the audiobook because it really helped me get through the book in a timely manner. But yeah like I said I still enjoyed it somehow. Uh, I mean it is Sarah J Maas so I already know that I love her and I love her writing style but at the same time this book feels very different from the Throne of Glass series so I'm very interested to see how things play out in the next two books. But that being said that is going to be it for this reading vlog for Akatar. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope that you would consider pressing that like button and subscribing and I thank you in advance if you do. See you guys in the next video. Bye!